reason, I am pleased to say that we're now joined by Paul Sims, who has recently come back from there. Paul, tell us what you saw. Tell us your experience. Uh, we went into Gaza yesterday at about 10 o'clock in the morning on the back of an Israeli Defence Force Humvee. We were then transferred onto the back of a tank. Um, and to put it very simply, it's like um, nothing I've ever seen. They've raised buildings to the ground. Um, there are just shells, concrete shells of buildings. There's rubble absolutely everywhere, twisted metal. Um, the main reason being that the Israeli Defence Force have gone in. Uh, they have a, 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 a mission to complete, which is essentially to find the tunnels, destroy the tunnels, cut the head off the snake of Hamas, weaken the organisation, find intelligence so that they're going from house to house, from apartment block to apartment block, they're collecting information, they're finding explosives, they're finding rocket propelled grenades, everything, they're feeding that back to the main command and they're inching ever closer in towards Gaza City because we've got to remember that there are hostages that are being held captive below ground 240 odd of them by Hamas who were snatched on October the 7th and I think what's quite important and striking is that we don't lose sight of the fact that there are 240 odd people 38 of them children who are being held captive by Hamas and the Israeli Defense Force are doing absolutely everything they can to to retrieve them and rescue them and that they've got a huge amount of experience in doing this uh, Paul, a uh, great report, by, a very powerful report by you and uh, congratulations also uh, to photographer Dan Charity. Uh, that's been the sun today. And you talk of this uh, vision of apocalyptic devastation. We've seen a bit of it on the telly here. It just looks like total rubble. Uh, you also report that... Uh, that the force that you were with have destroyed 90 tunnels. They're going about it bit by bit by bit. And you ended up inside the murder HQ where they think uh, important parts of the October the 7th invasion of Israel were planned. Uh, and that HQ was clearly uh, also a domestic dwelling as well. There were kids' toys around and everything. Tell us a bit about that. Like, like you say, in one bedroom, you've got... Uh, children's toys. I mean, it, 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 it's a complete wasteland. I must, must, must say that. In the rooms, you can see some of the footage now. It, it is like that in every single room. But there are signs in the children's room. There are toys, there are pyjamas on the floor, there's clothes, there's fireman's Sam paraphernalia. I looked inside a wardrobe. There were stickers on the wardrobe of Lionel Messi, of Real Madrid. And then you move over the hallway into a back room and it's a workshop where they're making bombs. And you've got to remember that 80% of the weaponry that Hamas armed themselves with on October the 7th was homemade. Um, so it, it, it's, it's an extraordinary thing to witness that you imagine that the children were in their bedrooms sleeping and their, their, their parents, or their, their dad was in another room making bombs. And the IDF explained yesterday that they're absolutely certain that this was a property used by a Hamas battalion commander they found his epaulets, they found um, various paraphernalia, they found maps, um, fuses, grenades. You can see it on the screen now. They found a huge amount of weaponry that had been made in that, in that property. And that's the thing that we've got to remember, that Hamas have placed themselves within residential civilian areas to use them as human shields. And so the IDF are going from building to building, trying to identify as much intelligence as they can. And yesterday, I mean, the most, one of the most was to find a, a very crude 3D model of one of the kibbutzes. And they're, they're almost certain it was, and you can see it. And it, this, this operation that they carried out, this terrorist attack, has been two years in the planning. And to, to, tell us a bit about, uh, I mean, we've seen it on the telly, and it looks like that where you've been, the, fit, the front line, absolute fierce 24-7 fighting. We've seen tanks letting off their guns. We're seeing sh you know, gun fighting, uh, people going through the rubble from building to building. It sounds very, very dangerous. And we've heard the IDF say that Hamas are fighting like uh, rats because they keep coming out of these tunnels and then firing their guns. Now, you've stood in the middle of that and you wrote about you could hear the crack, crack, crack of bullets all around you. It must be a terrifying place to be. Tell us about the sense of danger in that area? 
it's it's hard to it's hard to put it into words. I know that's my job, but it, it is very hard to put it into words. You you're very focused on where you are, what you're doing, and you've got to be incredibly aware at all times. You are hearing the constant crack of gunfire, explosions. A lot of it from where we were was artillery that was outgoing. Um, but you you have to be aware that you know, like you say, they they are fighting like rats. They're emerging from tunnels below below ground. You've got to be extremely aware. There are tanks roaring up and down um, the, uh, I, mean, I couldn't even call it a highway anymore, but they're roaring up and down the roads. We were only about a mile away from Gaza City. Um, so and that's where most of the fighting is now taking place. There's urban warfare, um, close quarter combat. Um, and yet yeah, you're absolutely right. It's extremely intense. Um, and the, the, it's, it's a very fluid situation, but it's also extremely high risk. I mean, now you're home, Paul, you must have sort of, you know, followed while you're out there and picked up while home the way that a lot of media is reporting this war. And very vital indeed that people like you have the courage and the temerity to go out there and see with your own eyes. Do you think that there is a gulf, essentially, between what is actually going on on the ground and how a lot of mainstream media in this country and across the West are reporting this? Can I just clarify? I'm not home. I'm, uh, I'm still in Jerusalem. Um, uh, and will be for another few days yet. Um, there, 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 is, there, is, there is a gulf. I mean, we, we, we shouldn't forget, and I think you made this point earlier, that this began with a terrorist attack that left 1,400 people dead. Um, a thousand of them civilians, 400 of them Israeli troops, 3,300 wounded. We, we shouldn't lose sight of that. Not only lose sight of that, but we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there are 240 odd people who are being held hostage. They snatched them from their homes, drove them across the border, through the fence, into Gaza and into the tunnels. And the Israeli Defense Force, in the same way that we would react if it happened on our shores, are desperately trying to essentially remove Hamas. And you can understand why they're doing that. And I think there is a bit of a disconnect. I'm not entirely, entirely sure why there's this disconnect, but there seems to be um, a, a kind of acceptance that this has happened, but it, it shouldn't be. It's utterly horrific what we've seen on videos. A lot of it can't be, can't be broadcast. No. Um, now, you're with the uh, IDF. Uh, many of them are reservists. They're lawyers, they're bus drivers, plumbers, teachers uh, who uh, went to fight for their country the moment the October the 7th invasion happened. Uh, so you've been with them moving through this hellish scene of catastrophe in Gaza. Uh, what is their mood like and how long do you think or do they think they'll be fighting like this? They are absolutely united. At the very forefront of their mind is what happened on October the 7th. They feel that responsibility keenly. I think the Israeli Defence Force, Israeli intelligence has failed at some stage. I, feel, I think they feel that sense of responsibility. Um, the people that I was with yesterday, the troops that I was with, they were reservists. They've answered the call and, uh, and they are prepared to do whatever it takes uh, with, with their, their political bosses in charge um, to rid um, Gaza of Hamas. And, uh, and, Paul, how does this work for you now? You're, as you said, currently in Jerusalem, back from having gone inside Gaza. Uh, what are you going to be doing next? You're going to be going back inside Gaza again with the IDF. How do you go about sourcing your stories? It's just journalistic practice. You just follow the story. You get the contacts, you speak to the people. We're in touch with the IDF. They took us in as part of an embed. We hope to go back in again. We want to start exploring the tunnels. The difficulty with doing that, though, is that the IDF are finding them and then blowing them up um, for obvious reasons, totally understandably. But, yeah, we should be going back into Gaza in the next few days. Doing great work, Paul. Thank you so much for your time. Look after yourself. Wow, incredible Thank stuff. Thank you very much.